Let's welcome Visa from CDC. He's going to share us uh, their user success experience. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Min. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's nice uh, Friday. And uh, I will, um, I, it is uh, my pleasure to take this opportunity to share the, uh, the perspective and observation through my customers' real engagement story and why they adopted Open Compute, what they found. And also, as uh, one of the solution providers, I'd like to share some perspective of what we need to keep it uh, in our mind. So, uh, Itochu Techno Solutions, as a, as a company, is uh, we are we've been in this uh, market about 40 years, and we are a global uh, solution provider across uh, Asia and the U.S., uh, which generates about 4.5 billion in terms of revenue, uh, with 8,000 employees, uh, including 6,000 engineers, uh, supporting 9,000 clients across those regions. And which also have our uh, DNA is we are bringing the cutting edge technology uh, to our clients to bring their IT to the next level to help our clients to grow their business. And we are also uh, one of the open compute solution providers. What we do is we provide technology advisory, uh, including uh, sort of uh, you know, implementation, implementation strategy, how we would architect things in terms of systems design-wise, and then uh, we would uh, also assure quality uh, during the delivery uh, to make sure a customer will be extremely happy with open compute that they buy. So um, from here, this is uh, based on real adoption sort of story. Uh, thing that what we found through uh, customers' uh, engagement around open compute. The first one is always we have a challenge of this curve and this curve. The red curve is really capacity demand and the blue curve is really capex and opex, which IT and data center needs to be. Uh, they need to be efficient. Uh, they cannot follow how uh, capacity growth, right? And always uh, those companies are looking for new technology to bring their infrastructure even more efficient to adapt by adapting new technologies. But there are a lot of technologies available and there is a need that we need to spend a lot of time to evaluate with from different options. And these sometimes cost higher than really you expected because you haven't implemented that before. And there is always a risk associated with it. So it's very difficult to choose the right technology to adapt. So what would be the approach for uh, these challenges? The uh, clients that we deal with and they adapted open compute was they found hyperscale plus openness. So why hyperscale was, uh, could be the right answer for them was because it's proven at scale. So what that, that mean for those companies would be it has lower risk than other technologies. And not only it has a lower risk to bring your infrastructure to the next level, open computer is simple, mature, and even innovative. And one of the beauties of open computer is not our manufacturer centric. Uh, it is very end user centric that came up with the designs of really addressing end users' pain points around operation. I like to, I, I think, you know, everybody and most of the people know about those designs, but I'd like to highlight uh, two things here. One is non-human error, which also our customer found it was very effective in how their operation was. It is unavoidable to educate 
on-site operational people not to misplug a power cable. It is unavoidable, it's human thing, human take, makes mistake. So that's why the mechanism that has no power cable allowed our client to avoid this mistake. And the second one, which is not also really highlighted in the committee yet, was, uh, sorry, one hand carry. So it, when you go to your site, you will bring a laptop, right, to troubleshoot things. And in traditional uh, you know, rack mount 19 inch server, usually has. So when you bring your laptop with you and going to the in front of the rack, you have to put your laptop there. And you have to unrack the server. And you have to bring your server into somewhere. And, or you have to bring your laptop on top of your server to bring it carefully to the place that you would do your on-site work. But open computer design allows is you can carry your server with your hand, hand. On the other hand, you can have your laptop. So that helps our client to save more time uh, in terms of on-site operation. And this is good for operation at scale. And the second one is uh, flexibility around procurement. So we used to have only one choice that we can negotiate with a uh, server manufacturer uh, about pricing. But what Open Compute allows is we have more flexibility around you know, choosing the right manufacturer for your you know, SSDs, HDDs, NICs. Uh, and maybe motherboard, you can directly communicate with those manufacturers, uh, sharing your strategy, and get them more motivated to invest in yourself, and you would have choice of the parts that you would like to standardize in your data center, and this is good for your uh, CapEx saving. And the second one is more like operation. Uh, you used to, you might have a dual sourcing strategy around the OEM gears that maybe you have manufacturer A and manufacturer B. Even though those are the same spec, those have different manufacturers. So that's how they have different policies around how they react in terms of support wise when you'd like to troubleshoot the stuff. There's a level of the information that each company share. Uh, so that there's a different level of the share that you will be shared by those manufacturers. It'll be sometimes difficult to really uh, solve issues. And the second one is even though the spec is the same, mechanical designs are different so that on-site people has different procedure to replace your parts so that it's a complex in terms of operation, uh, on-site operation. Last one. Usually, you do not have a uh, right to choose a part inside of the server box. So what you would end up with, that is, you would have actually piles of the servers sitting in the data center. So that is uh, not good for your operation. So what Open Computer allows is, it has the same mechanical design, because the spec and designs are open. You can, have, you can still have a dual sourcing strategy on your universal design. So that makes easier for the on-site operation. Second one, it's open policy so that, and also the important thing is I think software and hardware is pretty disaggregated. And if you, have, if you used to have some appliance model, you have more black boxes there. So, Having opened the policy uh, will allow you to solve issues much faster than before. Lastly, you don't have to have the piles of servers sitting on a data center. You can have set of the parts that you standardized, uh, you know, by DRAM, uh, SSDs, HDDs, so that is even more efficient in operation. So that's happy, right? And lastly. 
even though we have this proven concept and design and products in a community, at the same time it's innovative because we have new stuff coming up every, you know, every month, you know, every quarter, so that you know people can consume those innovations at the proven manner at scale already. So that that might be a right uh, strategy to adapt open compute. So uh, one thing I want to share with you is, um, so to keep in mind, uh, one thing around this is uh, uh, software. So when you think about the adopting open compute is, um, you would have a better situation if you have software, which is already resilient uh, as a software level, such as uh, web servers, distributed database, Hadoop, object storage, those kind of stuff. Uh, because open computer is very simple, has the least number of ports inside of the server, you wouldn't like to have those server uh, treated like a pet. You would like to have uh, those servers to be uh, like like a kettle, right? So uh, if you didn't have, uh, if you are relying on the hardware uh, reliability or a highly uh, high uh, HA sort of capability on the hardware side, might be a little difficult, but you don't have to worry about too much because there's always open computer solution providers comes to you to talk about systems architecture, implementation strategy, and help you to evaluate different softwares uh, with you guys. And also, there is a disaggregation lab from Facebook and Open Compute Foundation that uh, you can try uh, your software and evaluate your software on the peer open compute hardware at the lab. I think that's, uh, there is going to be more information coming up later on, right? So uh, I feel like open compute has some momentum here and would like to discuss more uh, with the people who are very interested in uh, open compute and I am more than happy to uh, also discuss and share more information if uh, uh, whatever information you are looking for. Thank you so much. And we thank Pisa sharing their uh, uh, experience on how they use the LCP gear. But I think there's never enough sharing you more of a you know, success user experience. So let's bridge the, uh, uh, our another remote partner in uh, Amsterdam. Hello everyone, uh, thank you Min, thank you Bing, and uh, thanks everyone for coming to the uh, WeWin Tech Day. My name is Menno Kortkaas from CircleB, and we provide OCP-based products and solutions. Uh, the products that we provide um, are the uh, rack and power infrastructure, um, the compute, the servers from WeWin of course, storage and networking. Um, yeah, we work very closely with WeWin uh, throughout Europe. Uh, one of our customers is Arctic Circle Data Center with their Arctic Cloud. Um, they, uh, they have chosen o Open Compute because of the innovations um, and open specifications. Um, you can read their statement here. For them, OCP uh, was a natural choice. Um, yes, they are located in the Arctic Circle. Um, it's quite far from the Netherlands, from uh, Amsterdam where we are. Um, and there's no direct flight and it takes quite a lot of time to, to deliver goods to them. Um, but why did they choose that location? Uh, because of the lower energy cost and lower cooling cost. Um, it's something that we've, uh, a story that we've heard from other OCP adopters as well. Um, and this for them is a great combination uh, with the efficiency and the toolless design that OCP offers. Uh, so we uh, think that um, a, a private cloud based on open software with open hardware from the Open Compute project uh, allows uh, companies to compete against the public cloud or run a very efficient private cloud. Uh, Circle B's proposal for Arctic Circle um, was this first uh, rack as a proof of concept. 
um, for running OpenStack and Ceph. Um, they have already finished testing on this uh, proof of concept rec and they decided to go for OCP. Um, so their next plan is to onboard trial customers uh, with uh, some rec expansions. Uh, they have a quite ambitious uh, plan um, for, for expanding. Um, so this is the, the site plan that they have. Um, the uh, current uh, first expansion is uh, uh, are these two racks, so they can build up uh, in site one, build an A and B uh, rack configuration with uh, the second site as a sort of backup site, um, <clears throat> and uh, uh, slowly migrate customers from uh, other cloud services onto their cloud service. Uh, what we've also done is uh, help them with the network configuration for this proof of concept. Um, so a typical uh, spine leaf configuration uh, with some routers attached uh, with a connection to the other site, uh, although not redundant, but it will be used as a backup site. Um, so that's, uh, that's it from my side. Um, if you'd like to stay in touch, uh, please email me at menno, M-E-N-N-O, at circleb.eu or follow us on Twitter, uh, Facebook, uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. There are regular updates with um, also some nice to know things like how to use a debug card, for example, um, and some product updates. Uh, the latest uh, Tioga Pass motherboard uh, will be uploading a video on Project Olympus from Microsoft soon, um, or just go to our website and have a look so thanks everyone, hope you have a nice time, thank you, bye.